Right, it's another rainy, shitty night, and I'm out here working on the car. It's quite good having a car that it doesn't really matter if it gets wet because um, you can carry on working. That is the clutch master cylinder. Um, it doesn't work, and I can't get the cap off either. And from my experience, if that's happened, then it's no, it's probably rotted out inside as well. So the plan is to whip that off, get it inside. I've bought a rebuild kit and hopefully the piston bore isn't too um, corroded and we'll be able to clean it up and it'll come back to life with a few new seals. So that's the plan. Made a somewhat disappointing but not entirely unexpected discovery. Whilst trying to get that union off at the back, um, A, it doesn't want to come off, so I'm going to have to get a proper brake spanner on it rather than my um, crappy open-ended spanners. Um, and then B, the other problem, the bulkhead is actually um, deforming there. It's a common spot for these to go. It's basically, even when they're not rusty, the bulkhead flexes every time you put your foot on the clutch pedal. And that's what's happened. It's flexed and then it's actually... I don't know really you can see that cracked so there's that reinforcing plate on the top and then the firewall is actually behind it so there's a crack there and so all that's gonna have to come out in order to weld it back up again um because i want really good access from both sides i might actually put a bit more reinforcing in there because it'll only do it again if i don't so um with that in mind i'm gonna work from this side and just free it off the pedal um put some WD-40 on those nuts and then call it a night for the moment because it's still raining and it's still pretty miserable out here. It's a rainy Saturday morning. It's about nine o'clock and despite the rain, I'm gonna crack on and um, carry on with a cooling system on this car. Right, my mate Jason came around yesterday. Um, he's very knowledgeable on the SD1 turbos because he's had a few, in fact, he's still got one that he's restoring. Um, turns out I've been mistakenly using the cold enrichment lever. I was just pushing and pulling it, but apparently you pull it all the way out, then you turn it to lock it, then you do your glow plugs thing. And with these, yeah, you're supposed to start it with your foot flat on the accelerator. So I'll wait for the glow plugs to go out and do that. Okay, so that's the enrichment lever, glow plugs is off. Very nice. So now I should turn it that way, put it in. Slight cough. Happy days. So I'm going to leave it running so that the coolant gets warm um, then I'm going to drop it because at the moment the only thing that's circulating in there is plain water and that coolant flush additive stuff and I want to refill it with um, proper coolant mix before I go away on holiday because it's now 1st of December and I don't want it to do something stupid like freeze up while I'm away. It's you know, that's pretty unlikely but it's not worth taking the risk because at the moment it's quite a happy little ending. So I'll leave it to run for a bit and then I'll drop it and no doubt make a mess of the car park. But you know, it's a wet rainy day so I guess it actually helps uh, to have a wet car park so I can flush it all over the hose quite easily. minor development. As it's been warming up you can hear like a squeaking noise which when you rev it I can't tell yet it's either water pump or alternator. Um, I've got another water pump which I paid 20 quid for so what I might do is instead of refilling the coolant is get it up to temperature, drain it all again then while it's drained, take the water pump off and have a look at that. Um, so yeah, it's gonna yeah change the plan somewhat, but 
it will allow me to dive over what that noise is and I won't make those things too much so that's the plan. Making progress. I've got the rad out and a lot of the ancillary pipe work for the air box and bits and pieces like that. Good news is the rain has stopped. Bad news is that there are quite a lot of seized nuts and bolts which are shearing, which is really annoying. Um, the radiator is out and it doesn't leak or anything, but there are a couple of bits where it's fairly corroded. So I'm going to have a good look at that and work out whether or not that needs a recall or whether I can just paint it up and use it as it is. I'm working my way towards the water pump. I haven't got there yet, but there it is. Um, so I'll just slacken off those belts, unbolt that, have a look inside. It may not be that that's at fault. It could be the alternator. I'm hoping it's the water pump because I was planning on changing it anyway and I bought one for 20 quid so that'll be a cheap fix. The alternator is actually working because it kicks out charge, uh, charge light goes off and the battery um, batteries haven't completely flattened, they're actually getting charged back up so I'm, I'm hoping it's not the front bearing on that. It could be, um, alternators aren't that expensive, it's just would be nice if I can keep that one. Right, I think I've found why it had circulatory problems. That is the pipe that goes from the underside of the thermostat housing back into the water pump, um, or vice versa. Anyway, it's completely clogged with crap. It's quite disgusting. Um, Yeah, not good. <clears throat> this is the water pump itself. Crap going in. And then the <clears throat> intake pipe from the lower rad hose into there. Basically completely corroded. So it's a good job I'm swapping that. I've got the big nut off the front of the water pump with an impact gun. Now I'm just working the pulley free so that I can get to the mounting bolts and then hopefully it will come apart. They go into a cast iron block, so I'm hoping they come out okay. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Right, this thing is well on there. Um, it has threaded holes, which I think are for a puller, but I don't have one. So what I'm using is map gas burner with WD-40, a bit of hammer action, and um, yeah, that's just what, how it's going to have to be. Warming it up to break the seal, then tapping it from behind with a hammer. So this could take a while, but uh, since I don't have a puller, it's about the only way I've got to do it. The heat's not going to damage anything because the only thing is really the water pump and that's goosed anyway. So um, yeah, I'm just going to carry on heating in it, hitting it, WD-40 and a bit of rain and hopefully it'll come off. Gave up on the blowtorch method because it was getting me absolutely nowhere. Um, it was well on and the more I hammered it, the more I was in danger of actually uh, damaging the pulley, which would be get hard to get hold of because uh, the only bits I could hit was the back of that ring. So it was getting more and more dented and I want to keep that straight because I don't know whether I'll be able to find another one. But here's the water pump. That's looking pretty sorry for itself. It's not really surprising if it sat for 24 years with no coolant in it. That rotten bit that I showed you earlier, um, that gave up the ghost when I tried to remove the pump from the block. It just sort of broke apart. Uh, yeah, so very happy this is now off the engine. In terms of where it bolts, there's a lot of crap in there I'm going to have to clean out. And really annoyingly, one of the bolts for the water pump sheared off at the head. So I'm going to have to get that stud out somehow. Probably clean it up, leave it to soak with WD-40 and then a bit of heat. And then I'll first off try mole grips. After that, I'll bring in my MIG welder and try and weld a nut to the top because there's quite a lot exposed then if that shears off I'll have to drill and tap it which 
yeah that's a ball lake but hopefully um, it won't won't come to that access is quite good though so if I take the bonnet off I should be able to drill a nice straight hole and um, yeah uh, it could be worse is all I'm gonna say fingers crossed it it comes out with the mole grips and a bit of heat Well, it's taken a while, but I finally got it off. No wonder it didn't want to come off. There's a machine shoulder with a keyway and a lot of corrosion had built up between the two. So the only way I could get it off was more heat, lots of WD-40. At one point I actually tried to chop the housing in half so that I could put it in our big press. Uh, but in the end, I was able to sit it on top of the vise and then hammer the head out of it until it came out. Um, the good news is it's still straight. The bad news it has obviously got a bit bruised from hammer blows and one bit fractured off, uh, which is a shame. So before I bother cleaning that up, I'm going to see if I can get a new one from either a Rover 800 or any of the other VM, you know, maybe a Range Rover, somebody still stocks one. It's a big, heavy, chunky thing and it's nicely machined. So whether I get one will also depend upon um, price, not just availability. New pump on the left, obviously, old pump on the right. All is good apart from that has a threaded hole to take this port here, which is looking distinctly second hand. Um, there's some kind of copper washer in there as well. So I'm gonna have to leave that to soak, I think, in order to stand any chance of getting that off without completely destroying it. I might actually cut the alley off the steel rather than the other way around um, or look to see if I can buy that part separate and then hopefully shove it all back in the car. That's the pulley after I've attacked it with the sandblaster. Um, it's come up quite nicely. It's definitely round. I've just checked it, putting it in a pillar drill and spinning it. So I'm not worried I've distorted anything. It's cast rather than stamped steel which is why it took the abuse so well. The only annoying thing is it that's why it fractured rather than bent. So um, yeah, uh, still look for a new one, but um, if not, I'll be happy to reuse it. I love impact guns. Literally put it on, bit of WD-40, uh, gave it a quick blast and it spun that out no problem. No damage whatsoever, so um, I'm going to put that in the blasting cabinet and see if it comes up nicely. And hopefully we should be good to go. Even the copper washer looks like it will clean up. And with a bit of Heinemar blue or another sealer, uh, it should be absolutely fine. So, result. Ta-da! How good is that? Even has a bead on the end still. So. That'll be going back in the new pump. Um, yeah, just need to get that stud out of the block really and do a final flush. I've been poking around cleaning out the uh, water pump housing and I've got a lot of the scale and the crap out, but I'm gonna hose it out again because um, I'm not 100% convinced with that blockage before I was getting everywhere so while that's all apart I'm going to give it a blast and see what happens. be quite interesting to see what actually comes out this time. don't know whether I can do this one handed or not. Probably not. Couldn't really get a video of that one handed, but nice and shiny clean. Water was flowing out through there perfectly clean, and it was coming out of the um, heater matrix clean as well. While I had the hose out, I just gave it a very quick blast around the engine bay. Um, yeah, there's some rust, but nothing insurmountable. This battery tray is great for one of these, the other one less good, so that'll need some repairs, but on the whole, nothing too troublesome.
might look drastic and again not something I was planning on doing just taken the brake master cylinder and servo off the bulkhead because the clutch definitely needs to be changed the clutch master cylinder the bolts one is extremely rounded off the other one is very hard to get to but now with the servo out of the way I can get a grinder in and chop those off the great thing is the bulkhead is remarkably sound in this area and that was an area that I was quite worried That was seriously hard work. I could get a grinder on the bottom one, but the top one I had to cut through with a hacksaw blade just in my hand, working it backwards and forwards. Cut it off eventually, and you can see why I needed to. That's the hole, and this is the rusty bit which is probably cracked. So I'm going to get that insulation panel off next and have a good look. Got the bulkhead insulation panel out. Well, that is where the clutch should go, clutch master, and that's not difficult to repair. What's really good news is that whole of this seam all the way down to the chassis rail, which usually rots out, is perfect. It's good all the way around the steering column, so I don't need to take that out. And it's good all the way up the transmission tunnel on this side. The only unexpected and bad news is that that seam coming down from the um, heater box area because the overflow has got blocked and then it's filled up with water it's just rotted that seam out so um, yeah I'll have to repair that and of course access to that area is quite limited because we've still got the engine in the car slightly annoying is that the bulkhead insulation panel which is like rocking horse poo which was in good nick has come out but you know it's cracked and split so um, I'm going to see if I can either find another one or repair that with fiberglass. <laughs> 